In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the courses which I'm offering in Econometrics. I'm going to be offering two courses in Econometrics. One of them is an undergraduate course, and the other one is sort of aimed at graduate students. But in both of these courses, the same sort of theme is running behind both of them, which is namely that we have some sort of population. So it could be a population of countries. It could be a population of individuals, for example. So I've sort of drawn that here with stick figures. And the idea with econometrics is that we don't actually have the entirety of the population's data. We only have what we call a sample from that population. And the idea with econometrics is that we would like to use some sort of tool on that sample, which will then enable us to make some sort of estimation about what's going on in the population. In particular, we would like to make some sort of inference about what is going on in the population. We'd like to infer about what's going on in the population, given that we've only got a sample. In both courses, the first sort of tool which we're going to introduce is that of ordinary least squares. And it turns out that under a set of criteria, which we call the Gauss-Markov assumptions, if each of these Gauss-Markov assumptions is satisfied, then it happens to be the case that ordinary least squares are a very good thing to use on our sample to make some sort of inference about what's going on in the population. In particular, or being specific, ordinary least squares happens to be blue, which means it's the best linear unbiased estimator po possible. Don't worry if you don't understand what that means, we're going to cover that in the videos. And the next thing we'll cover is how do we go about testing that each of these criteria are satisfied? So we're going to cover what we call sort of diagnostic tests. And if these conditions aren't satisfied, then it happens to be the case that ordinary least squares is no longer blue. So perhaps it's no longer a good tool to use on a sample to make some sort of inference about what's going on in the population. And then if that is the case, we actually go on then to talk about how some other estimators, so instrumental variables, for example, GLS, maximum likelihood, and we'll probably touch a little bit on GMM, can be used under a set of criteria which aren't perhaps as taxing as the Gauss-Markov assumptions. So it just so happens that under a sort of lesser set of assumptions, then these estimators might not necessarily be blue, but at least they'll perhaps be consistent, which is another sort of way in which we judge the quality of our sort of tool, our estimator which we use on the sample. That concludes the first half of the sort of undergraduate course. The second half of the undergraduate course is then concerned with what we sort of call time series. And time series is when we have some sort of data which is varying across time. So perhaps we're looking at a level of a company's sales across time, for example. So this sort of line I've drawn here might represent company's sales across time. And it just so happens that when we sort of consider time series, we need to be a little bit more careful when we're talking about the conditions under which ordinary least squares is a good thing to use on our sample, because the sort of sample in time series doesn't actually mean exactly the same thing as it does in the sort of cross-sectional example, which is where we have a set of data which is collected at one point in time. And we're going to use cross-sectional data to sort of introduce these sort of basic concepts of ordinary least squares being blue and to talk about the Gauss-Markov conditions. But when we sort of come to discuss time series, we need to modify some of these assumptions slightly. And that's going to occupy us for the sort of second, um, perhaps not half, but perhaps the second sort of third of the course. And then finally, the sort of last thing we'll cover is that of panel estimation. And we'll sort of talk a little bit about sort of the between estimator and we'll sort of talk a little bit about fixed effects and random effects. But that's really going to encompass the entirety of the undergraduate course. The graduate course is going to be quite similar to the undergraduate course, but one fundamental difference is that it's going to use matrix algebra. Whereas in the undergraduate course, there will be absolutely no matrices if I can help it. But when you get to the graduate level, linear algebra becomes the sort of best way to summarize econometrics. So we're going to introduce that to begin, to begin with, with the graduate course. 
And having this sort of new knowledge about how we describe econometrics using matrices, that's going to allow us to discuss some estimators which we sort of talked about in the first sort of undergraduate course, but in much greater detail. So we're going to talk about things like GLS, we're going to talk about sure estimators. We're also going to go on to discuss GMM, which we're only going to sort of cover a little bit in the undergraduate course. It's also going to allow us to talk about panel estimation in a much greater detail and using a sort of much richer set of tools than we used in the undergraduate course. And we're going to compare sort of fixed effects and random effects. We're also going to go on and discuss time series in much greater detail than we did in the undergraduate course. And we're going to discuss topics such as VARs and perhaps even sort of VEC M, which don't worry if you don't understand what that means, but they're sort of methods for dealing with multivariate data. So these are some of the topics which we're going to discuss in the graduate level course. We're also going to discuss some sort of other ways of thinking about regression. And, and one of them is that of the sort of causal interpretation of regression, which is what are the set of criteria under which we can definitely say that X necessarily causes Y, for example. We're also going to talk about a little bit Bayesian inference or Bayesian econometrics, which is a whole sort of different way of thinking about the world opposed to the sort of frequentist view, which we're going to have covered up until this point. Anyway, I hope you'll join me for my videos and please leave me feedback if there are any other videos you want to be added or you want something to be made clearer in the video, please provide feedback because that's the only way this course is going to get better. Anyway, thanks very much.